These people are roaming through the woods because a psychic told them to. It's a frigid day and they're trying to solve the mystery of baby Lisa. She feels that the baby um, was dumped. The psychic told them this is where they'll find the body of baby Lisa Irwin, now missing for four and a half years. Psychic Stephanie Almaguer says she believes Lisa's remains are somewhere along the scrubby banks of the Missouri River. Stephanie, who calls herself the Texas medium, is actually texting the search party clues. She says she picks up from the spirits. What makes you believe in the psychic? I don't believe in a psychic. I just, I don't believe, it's hard. I don't believe in it, I just, you know, I just respecting her. A psychic from the Lone Star State is just the latest bizarre turn in a case filled with so many weird twists. It was a balmy autumn evening in Kansas City. 10-month-old Lisa disappears in a neighborhood so safe, kids walk and ride bikes down the middle of the street. The next day, Lisa's parents, clutching her stuffed Barney doll, make a tearful plea for her safe return. Just want our baby back. Please, bring her home. Neighbors say there was a strange visitor lurking that night, a mystery man who was seen clutching an infant. He was wearing like a dark colored pants and what we believe was a t-shirt, like a white t-shirt. And then he had the baby in his arms and he had the baby's head kind of like this. Cops conducted a massive search with police dogs, cops on horseback, and hundreds of officers on foot. They even climbed into manholes. They didn't find her. Then firefighters and police raided this abandoned house removing the deck and lowering a firefighter into a dried up well. I never knew there was a deck there, I'd right, be honest with you. The firefighters were hosed down afterwards, but no luck. Lisa wasn't there. Where was she? She's such a good baby and if you pick her up when she's sleeping, she'll, she'll cuddle with you and I mean, she, uh, she won't cry. As the search intensifies, Deborah soon finds herself under the police microscope. Crime scene investigators removed dozens of bags full of evidence from the house. In the piles of evidence, they find a receipt for this grocery store. That leads cops to the store's surveillance video showing Deborah buying paper plates, napkins, and boxed wine just hours before Lisa vanished. Deborah later admits she was drunk and may have blacked out. Three days later, Deborah and husband Jeremy clam up saying the cops bullied them too much. The mother and father decided to quit cooperating with the police. Deborah quickly changed her mind and said she understood why cops focused on her. Yes, but I, it's, it's their job. They, 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 this is what they do. They have, unfortunately, and I, they, they have to look to the family in, in today's world. Two weeks later, cops become more suspicious when Deborah changes her story about the last time she saw Lisa. 6.40 p.m., she now claims, not 10.30 p.m., as she originally stated. In an affidavit for the search warrant, cops say Deborah told them she didn't search behind the house because she was afraid of what she might find. Deborah says cops told her, we think you did it. Did you harm Lisa? Absolutely not. Deborah then volunteers to take a polygraph, but she fails. They said you failed, and I shock just like every other the thing that I found out that doesn't make sense or shock, it's not possible. Why do you think you failed? I don't think I failed. Despite the results of the lie detector, husband Jeremy doesn't believe Deborah has anything to do with Lisa's disappearance. I don't care. I told him I don't care. Um, it, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter at all. Then another weird twist. The parents hire Manhattan lawyer Joe Tacopina after they say police told them they consider them suspects. I think sometimes we forget who these two people are um, and what they're going through. And it gets weirder. The Irwins hire their own private investigator paid by an anonymous donor. His name is Wild Bill Stanton, a former bouncer and bodyguard from New York City. I am a private investigator and I have been asked to come out here and do an independent investigation. Wild Bill has baggage. A 2001 cover story for New York Magazine quotes famed PI Bo Deedle saying 
he couldn't find a black person in Harlem, but Wild Bill's investigation went nowhere. It's been over four years, and the mystery of baby Lisa is unsolved. Deborah has never been officially named as a suspect. Jeremy was at work and has what appears to be an ironclad alibi, and cops never found the mystery man seen clutching a child. The family just celebrated Lisa's fifth birthday, strangers coming from miles around bearing gifts and good wishes. And I thought uh, we'd support and bring her a little gift and a balloon, a little teddy bear and balloon. This age progression picture from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children shows what Lisa might look like today if she is still alive. We can't even imagine what this family's going through. At numerous candlelight vigils, friends and family hold out hope baby Lisa is still alive. But as the years go on, the case grows colder, and that hope is fading like the winter sun. I miss him so much. <laughs>